In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. It is Tuesday, the 20th day of July, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. We continue with our series on tithing, and I am still answering questions that have been sent to me. And as I told you, please keep sending me your questions where you need some clarification. If I can, I will. Uh, where I am, I am not very sure, I will consult people and books. So today, Tuesday, we are doing part three. Part one was on Saturday. Then yesterday, Monday, we did part two. So today, we are doing part three. And I want to start with a question that came through my email. And of course, I had received another from, uh, from some text messaging. The difference between tithing and offering. In fact, somebody first asked, what is the difference between 10% and tithing? and the offering. A tithing is the tenth of the money that we give. So that means 10% and tithing are the same thing. You can use the two interchangeably. So there is no, there is no conflict. If you're using the word 10% or tithing. But uh, then what is the difference between a tithe or the 10% of my offering, uh, I mean of whatever I give, and an offering? So what is the difference between offering and tithing? An offering is any money you choose to give above and beyond the tithe. Any money you give above and beyond the tithe, that is called an offering. I give an example. Uh, in your church, you take your, you take your tithing. For example, uh, you have got your envelope uh, or maybe you are wiring the money direct to the church bank. And then the money goes, but then you feel that you needed to do something for your pastors or your priests. What you have done, the money you have given above the tithing that you took, it's called an offering. And, uh, but then we say, tithes and offerings are different, as we have said. But they do have one thing in common. A big thing in common. They both work to build your trust in God as your ultimate provider and they decrease your dependence on money. I hope that is very clear now. After all, uh, Matthew 6.24 teaches us or tells us, and I read for you, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Matthew 6, 24. So we say that uh, when we give, whether it is tithing or it is offering, we are telling God that, you know, you are the principal giver and the principal recipient. And now that now brings the other question. Connected with that. Among the person who gives the tithe and the one who receives the tithe, who is more blessed? Biblically, the tither 
is more blessed than the, than the recipient of the tithe. It is as simple as that. So the, the whole act of giving, as I, as, I, as I said, I think on Saturday, and also partly yesterday, is about the depth of our faith. Because as I did um, tell you, we don't give from the money we have in the pocket or in our accounts, bank accounts if you like. But our giving is prompted and driven by our faith. And now that explains why we said that giving is not a mathematical thinking, but giving is a spiritual thinking and deliberation. So then somebody asks, how do I separate tithing and offering? It is as simple as I have answered that question. You separate them first by understanding what tithing is and what offering is. And please don't mix them. Do not mix tithing or don't give an offering in the name of tithing or tithing in the name of an offering. One of the, one of the best lessons we learn, especially in the spirituality of giving, is honesty. Because giving has its own spirituality. And the first thing that a mature Christian does is to remove any confusion. One of the challenges we have today is that, go, is that we have become so dishonest. We, we behave as if God does not know what we are going through. And therefore, we are full of excuses. And we are saying, I can't do this because of one, two, three things. Or um, I give an example. And this now this brings uh, to a question. Number, I think the other question is that what do I tithe? Now, there is a, a belief out there from Christians who are a bit dishonest. That we only tithe the salary that we get. I'm imagining a scenario where Father CK is a salaried fellow. And for example, from my salary, I get 30K. But apart from that, I've got a few other things that I do. I have some matato business. I also sell land. And maybe I have a small shop. So you'll find some people, for them they believe that their tithing is what comes from the salary. And the rest is forgotten. So we say, in terms of answering this question, what do I tithe? We tithe whatever income that we get. In fact, we tithe even gifts. But as we do that, Again, we must be very quick to say that we tithe our money. I tithe my money. So we don't tithe money that is not ours. And I think that when I made it very clear on Saturday. So the other question that I have always wanted to answer and this one has been asked like so many times. Can I tithe loan? Can I tithe loan? Now, that question is a bit technical because it doesn't have a clear-cut answer. However, remember one of the principles that we said that we only um, tithe money that is ours. So is loan your money? Loan is the money that you are borrowing to repay at a later date. So, can I consider that loan as money that now that is in my account, 
can I tithe this money? And the answer is yes and no. And I want to start with yes. I mean, I want to start with no. Principally, you don't tithe alone. Principally. In principle, you do not tithe loan. Because you take loan for a specific reason and it must be paid within a specified time. For example, if you, if you, if you take a loan of a million and you wanted to buy a certain property, and then out of a million, then uh, some money goes. So eventually you may not be able to, to do as per the intention. And because this money will have to be paid back, then it is not quite advisable to tithe that money in principle. Then there is a part of yes. And the part of the yes is actually driven by radical faith. Radical faith is where we say that God can do a lot with 10% than I can do with 100%. Did you get that? That God can do a lot with 10% than I can do with 100%. This is where you know that you have taken a loan. The loan is 100,000 or 1 million, or 10 million, or 20 million. And then you see, because there is nothing I do on my own, whatever it is I do, we do with God. And this is his money. And this is his project. To be able to journey with him, I would have no problem giving some portion of this money as my tithing to God. Now, that requires radical faith. So yes, and no, you can low, you can tithe the loan, and I think that is um, that is uh, very very important. And somebody is asking eh, that, uh, and this I think I answered this either yesterday or Saturday about gross and net. But then somebody is, is, is talking about some um, a mandatory or statutory deductions. So at what point do I tithe my salary if I am only a salaried person? Now I need to give an example here. I'm imagining that your salary is 30,000 30, and then there is pay, there is what, there is what. You know in principle here all the deductions are to my favor. If it is money for retirement, for health, insurance, mention them, all the dedu deductions. All deductions are to my advantage. And if they are to my advantage, it means the money is still with me. So, somebody will be very quick to argue. But Father, you know, this money is deducted before the money comes to me. That is true. But you know what your salary is. Your salary is 30,000. Even if after the deductions you are given zero, you still owe God your tithe. So if it is 30,000, your tithe is 3,003. Even if what you get at the end of it is 1,000, your tithe has not changed. And this is where some people become a little bit cheeky. <laughs> so you say that, you know, after all the deductions, I get 2,000. Ask yourself, where did the money go? Some of it is being deducted because maybe you took some loan. So who benefited from the loan? It is you. You can't say that, no, uh, I took the loan and I, the money I was conned. No, it is you who was conned. It's not God who was conned. So, so we can try to dance around with some funny answers. But as I, as I told you, there is nothing as good as honesty. Because a mature Christian will always, as it were, 
be very honest with whatever it is that they they do in church and with God. And I keep asking, when we give excuses, it is easy for me to lie to my pastor. It is easy for me to lie to my priest because largely these are human beings and they do not know how much I, I, I earn. But I know, and what I know, God knows too. So the last person who should hear our excuses, it is God. He knows even how much you are worth. So when you try to take some corners, the question that we need to ask is, you are taking corners to hide from who? When we mature in faith, we learn one thing in principle. Honesty. And when we are honest, we have no trouble. Because we do one thing that is very important. Surrendering. We surrender ourselves and our resources to God. If we are doing businesses, it's not our businesses any longer. It belongs to him. When God is our number one, when God is my number one in my life as a Christian man, it therefore means that he is number one in my finances. But I cannot be saying that we, I have a relationship with God. He is my friend. He is my personal savior. That is okay. How comes that God is your number one when you are doing other things, but when money comes, the story changes? That is called lack of honesty. I'll pick it up from there tomorrow morning. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Tuesday. And as I said, if you have, a, uh, have any question, please keep asking. You can text me. My number is there, 721 If you If you want to do an email, it's kenyafr at gmail.com. If maybe you have got some material you'd want to share with my congregation, I would have no problem. Uh, if you think there is an area that you don't quite agree with me, uh, please feel free. I always graciously accept feedback. So feel free to say something, to ask, even to add. Me say that, Father, I have an article here. I would want to share with you. Can you share with me? I'll be more than happy. Thank you so much. To another question.